Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Dia and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm going to be going over my top five things that I liked and disliked over Black Ops 6 during the beta. This is only an analyzation of the multiplayer beta. This will have nothing to do with zombie or the campaign or anything like that. I also want to say that this is just my own opinion. This isn't anything where I've looked at community people like rating their things and changed my list in any way. This is from my personal view of what I have seen throughout the game, what I've heard from my own friends. So I'm going to start with the cons and what I would do to fix it if anything at all. And then I'll go with the pros so we end on like a good note. These are gonna be in no specific order. This is just what I wanna talk about. So at number one, I'm just gonna say the pistols, the snipers, and the battle rifles. The pistols themselves are able to two tap. If you hit a headshot and a body shot, I believe that they can two tap or all body shots would be a three tap. And I feel like that's a bit strong for pistols. I feel like a four to five shot would be really good even with all the attachments on there. And the reason for that being is if I'm running around with an automatic weapon and I have someone rounding the corner and two shotting me with a pistol because yes, they're accurate, but it's a pistol. I'm gonna start getting pretty pissed. I think the pistols are a bit strong. And with those being strong, I would go into something that has no home, which is the battle rifles. I feel like the battle rifles just don't have a home. They're outclassed by assault rifles at medium range. I would even say still they're outclassed by snipers at long range. And at close range, they're outclassed by SMGs and shotguns. So I really think that the battle rifles are just mediocre at best. I'd like for them to excel a little more at medium range. Maybe that's buffing their medium range capabilities. Maybe that's nerfing the assault rifles. I don't know, but I'd like to see the battle rifles have a home come the final release. And lastly, for the weapons, I'm talking about the snipers. The snipers themselves are just not very good. There is a video that was flying around for a bit. I actually don't have it on hand. However, it was a video comparing the centering and they looked at the last Call of Duties, they looked at Black Ops Cold War, Modern Warfare 3, and I think Modern Warfare 2. And they looked at the centering for sniper rifles and every single one centered pretty much on the dot. However, you then go into the Black Ops 6 beta and the snipers are not centering. The crosshair is sometimes a little high and off to the left, sometimes a little high and off to the right. So making sure that the snipers themselves center is a really big thing. And I think that's gonna be very drastic for the game going into the full release because if snipers themselves are not working as intended, they're not centered, they're shooting a bit slow, they're shit to use, but they become good when they're leveled up, then I think that's gonna really hurt the game. Because another thing I heard uh, specifically from Phase Scope, he said something along the lines of, the guns now are shit, but you have to use them to make them good. I think that's not very good at all. And I think that's very true in the snipers. So getting the snipers buffed at least in terms of the centering, I think is gonna do a lot for the game. Next is gonna be HVT, and I'm gonna be honest, other than changing things specifically about the HVT, I don't know how to fix this game mode. I'm just gonna avoid it as a whole. But if you do wanna play this game mode and I was gonna make some changes, I would reduce the amount of armor plates that the HVT has from either three to two or three to one. I would also reduce the amount of armor plates they can carry either from three to two or three to one. That way it goes in correspondence with how many plates you have already equipped. I would also change the UAV from a Blackbird and Advanced UAV style to a sweeping constant radar. I think that game mode is way too enabling for the HVT and I really think it needs to give them buffs not turn them into a walking radar god because I've played HVT and some of my friends that I play with they will be helping me out and they'll just keep asking me where are people at where are people at and all I have to do is sit in a corner and as people round the corners on the map I can call from the left from the right like above us and anything like that so I think the HVT needs a change like that so they have something to enable them and make playing HVT unique while also keeping it a little in line with other players. The next thing I want to talk about is the spawn system. The spawns in this game, no, they're not very good at all. I have a clip, which you're going to see on screen now, of me spawning into the map on Skyline and someone is staring at me dead in the eyes. And I really just do think that the spawns in this game are not good at all. I will say that they have their moments where they're good, but there's two things that instantly stick out to me. On Babylon, in the corners of the map, I think believe it's by the A flag, that you can sit in that small room, just lay on the ground, and people will just keep spawning in front of you over and over and over and over and over again. And then there's Derelict, where if you get to the back of the map, where all the containers are, you will just keep spawning there unless someone physically runs into that spawn and pushes you out. 
you can get stuck in a nasty spawn trap on that map and i think the spawn system has to be a little more aggressive in terms of moving people to certain areas of the map or that spawn has to be changed and that should just should not be a spawn there has something has to be done with derelict in order to make it a good map and i think the map itself is okay but in order to make it good or even great i think that spawn has to be changed in the slightest overall spawns need to change but that is one example that i'm just that is inexcusable and the final thing I want to talk about before I talk about the pros are the perks. The perks themselves are good, but I think they're not distributed well. For example, we have Tactical Mask, Black Jacket, Ghost, Ninja, and Scavenger all in the perk one slot. These are five really strong perks that are just, there's too many in one area, requiring you, in my opinion, to make too many sacrifices. Now, would I love to see things move around? Absolutely. Do I think we will? Probably not. I am happy to say, however, that I'm glad that Ninja is no longer a field upgrade. It is now back to a perk. I'm very just sick and tired of seeing it be a field upgrade. Uh, as we currently know, it is not a field upgrade at all. In Modern Warfare 3, we have the, the Covert Sneakers and the Dead Silence field upgrade. That is no longer an option in this game, as it seems. So if I was to move the perks around, I would definitely make perk slots 2 and 3 more viable and swap things from those both of those sections into perk 1. So I would probably put i'd probably keep scavenger in perk one i'd probably make the player choose between flak jacket and tack mask still in maybe the perk two or perk three slot and then i would definitely move either ninja or ghost to the perk two or perk three because it could turn you into this absolute assassin and i really think having to choose between two to three powerful perks per section would be really really nice i think that add a lot of balance and require you to make still make some sacrifice while also enabling you to be this kind of juggernaut in your own play style whether you want to be really quiet with suppressors and ninja and ghost or you want to go loud and just jump on the objective and run around everywhere with flak jacket tack mask and like dexterity you'll have way more options and i think it'll allow for more flexible play styles but going into the pros talking about the perks are the specialists i really like the specialists i think the specialists themselves are a very good addition to the game i think they help make it feel vibrant and different while rewarding you for choosing to specifically play in a certain way you want to play on the objective use all the green perks and we'll give you the tools to become as tanky and as good as you can at capturing objectives will even enable you to do so if you want to just go around and run and gun and be a slayer choose all the red perks and you can be enforcer with bonus movement speed and health regen if you want to play off of information you can play recon where you get a ping for five seconds off your spawn i do think recon is the least strong i wouldn't say it's weak still by any stretch of the imagination i just wouldn't say it's as strong as the others i think in my opinion it's for at least someone who likes to play the way i do where i'm not insane at call of duty but i'm definitely not bad either i think strategist is actually really strong with how much we have in terms of flak jacket and tack mask and the ability to throw equipment faster is just much much better so i think strategist is actually gonna be used much more than people realize i think recons will stay at the bottom and i think enforcer is going to say about the same amount of usage so i'm curious to know how those influence the play style and how people like to play the game hopefully they only get better with time and maybe during the year we will see more influence from perks and we'll get more specialists going back to the weapons i want to talk about the ars and smgs post jackal nerf for those of you who don't know on release the jackal was by far the best weapon in the game not a debate it's not even close the jackal was killing everybody left right and center it was beating ARs at medium range, beating snipers at long range, beating shotguns at close range. It was just doing everything. And then the Jackal got nerfed, and now we have a really good weapon ecosystem, in my opinion, at least between the ARs and the SMGs. Now, are the snipers and pistols and such still viable? Yeah. However, I think that in terms of ARs and SMGs, those are obviously going to be dominant. And having access to the C9 and the Jackal on release is going to be really, really good. I think the Tonto is a bit strong, but I won't talk about that weapon specifically i just want to talk about the category as a whole and then the assault rifles from the three we had access to and the xm i think it was the xm4 the ak-74 and the aims 85 i think those five to six weapons are in such a healthy position in the game all of them are good all of them are usable and all of them feel like they can compete with each other and that is what i want to see that is something i think call of duty has really failed to do time and time again for example last year we have we had the rival nine and the mcw in modern warfare 3 and and holy shit, those are just insanely dominant choices. Now, are there other choices that are viable? Absolutely. But those are by far the best in slot. 
Whereas right now for assault rifles, I couldn't tell you what the best in slot was for each. A lot of people say the XM4 is shit. I really like the XM4. Some people say the AK is the best. Some people say the AIMS is best. Post Jackal nerf, I would say it's also really close between all three SMGs. So I hope we keep a healthy weapon ecosystem going into the full game. And considering we're going to be talking about weapons, I think the TTK is also fantastic. We're going back to 100 health Call of Duty. And with 100 health Call of Duty, that means the time to kill is going to be quicker. And because the time to kill is quicker, the skill gap is going to be larger. Again, I am not a sweaty player. I think I had a 1.5 elim ratio and a 1.53 win loss throughout the beta after 20 hours. And the TTK was fantastic. I really liked how fast people die because I didn't feel like it was too fast to where it was punishing for even minor mistakes, but I felt like it wasn't so long to where anyone had a chance to kill anybody. It was like, if you played smart, you were rewarded. If you played like an idiot, you weren't rewarded. It's as simple as that. And overall, I just, we've been on a 150 health Call of Duty for a while, and I've always said that 125 health Call of Duty would be the golden zone. I still like 100, 100 health Call of Duty, but 125 would be the golden point. That being said, I really hope that they keep this TTK, and if they're gonna stay on 100 health, and they don't go and change it because it feels fantastic. And then the Omni movement. Omni movement is such a refreshing change to the game. I personally didn't utilize it, but to see people utilizing it in my games, whether they're on my team or not, watching a stream or watching a YouTube video, it was really, really nice to see. I'm really glad that people are utilizing it and having a lot of fun. I also think it breathes a really big breath of fresh air into the game. I think that playing with an Omni movement is definitely going to make the game feel more arcadey, back to the style that we knew, but with a different twist. We used to know Call of Duty as this bare bones, run, shoot, kill, no science or madness to the game. Like, oh, you want a red dot? Boom. It doesn't affect your gun other than give you a red dot. And then obviously rapid fire. Boom. It gives you more fire rate. And yes, there's more recoil, but the recoil will be easy on every gun it was on. We're now going back to the arcadey style with the attachments aren't to that level, but the movement is making up for it. The movement feels fresh. It feels revitalized. It feels like there's purpose when I move. Even the base movement speed got buffed. And for someone like myself, that made a huge difference in my gameplay. And I really feel like I had more fun. So the Omni movement is definitely going to be up there for me in terms of hoping that it doesn't get changed too much. And then the last thing I want to cover for me personally is going to be the maps and the music. The main theme of Black Ops 6 specifically truly felt like they worked hard on it. It was really catchy. It was really, really nice. I felt myself actually looking up the music on YouTube and listening to it on my own. I really hope that they continue to make music like this that feels very Black Ops arcade inspired and they don't slouch down on it. I will also say that the maps themselves, specifically Scud, Derelict minus the spawn, and Babylon were my favorite maps. Scud was by far my favorite map in the whole beta. I really liked the way it flowed. I heard a lot of people say they were worried about going through the middle of the map because of the satellite dish. I'll be honest, in my experience, even if I sat on top of a satellite dish, people were not afraid. Whether it was my teammates not being afraid of them or the other team not being afraid of myself and my team, nobody was afraid to run through the middle of the map. People were just fucking going. And I like the fact that it gives you an advantage, but not too much to where people want to avoid it. I think the flow of the map is great. And from my personal experience, no matter which side of the map you hold, you have a decent chance to win. Now, if you're on the side with a satellite dish, you definitely get stuck in a trap much easier. So people like to flip the spawns a lot. However, it's still winnable. It's still, you're still able to have fun. Babylon, other than the spawns, is a really fun map. I think it's shipment with extra steps. I've said this before. And Derelict is actually a fun map, minus that one spawn. So if you're not sitting there just getting spawn trapped in the one corner, the map is actually pretty fun. I will say my least favorite map is Rewind. Rewind is just not good. It just doesn't feel fun to play. Every single match I think I had on that map went to the time limit. And it just was too slow, I think, for how fast the game could be. Skyline was a good map as well. I really enjoyed the hotel setting. I think the lighting went fantastic on that map. I think that the map on HVT is a piece of giga dog shit because people like to sit underground. And because of that, I think the map just suffers tremendously from it. However, I will say I will not complain about getting Skyline. It probably is joint third or second with Babylon, um, but Scud was by far my favorite map, hands down. But those are my thoughts on the beta. I probably missed something that a lot of people liked or disliked, but this is just stuff off the top of my head that I thought was the most noticeable in terms of dislikes and likes. I'll be covering more of this 
this when the full game comes out on October 25th. We have a lot of games that, that are coming out before and during that period, as well as I'll most likely be double uploading during that time, so make sure you stick around during the release, as well as before and after. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video. It really helps the channel grow. It lets me to know that you're enjoying the content. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos in the future. Until next time, this is Dia, signing off. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace, guys.